I'm back. And where do I start? I start at sketchbooks. That's where I'm going to start. So I've got this to show you today because it's such an important place to start when you're really overwhelmed and we can do when we're creatives, we can get, get so overwhelmed and not know where to begin or take ourselves a bit too serious. And sometimes you just got to get back to your sketchbook. So that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm going to bring to you as I get back to my channel on YouTube. The first one I want to say, if you're still here and hanging around after all this absence time, I thank you for hanging around and for the new subscribers that have just jumped on recently that obviously I know that I've met you and you've come on to see what I've got here. My channel has got all sorts of projects that I've indulged myself in, including painted furniture and children's book illustrations. And of course my artwork and my faith-based work. Um, but for this new season, just now, and things will be changed up as I move between projects that I'm working on, um, I want to really put place an emphasis on sketchbooks and not just sketchbooks for sketching, but I also paint little studies in sketchbooks. I use them for a lot of reasons and they're a high value tool for artists. And not just artists, they're a high value tool for anyone who wants some downtime and a little bit of sanctuary space. They're, they're amazing. So I want to encourage no matter what skill level you're at to pick up a sketchbook and start to play. And today I want to show you where I started um, on my birthday week and uh, what I chose to do. What you won't find on my channel is likely to be very well constructed cinematic videos. So I just don't have that skill and likely no makeup either. But if you want to see my thinking process as an artist and, and you know, how I process things and enjoy the time creative, little tips and little adventures, then subscribe. You know the drill, subscribe, click the little bell that says you want all the notifications and you'll be able to get it from here in. Oh yeah, and no um, funny chimp monk voiceovers and back of the head for 10 minutes before you even get to see the artwork. I won't do that to you. Okay, just one, just that one to get my point across. So this is the location I decided to indulge in for my birthday and take my sketchbook and my paints and just take in as much of this place as I could on the day. It was the Blue Lotus Water Gardens in Yarra Junction, Victoria and it was magnificent. There was just acres and acres of beautiful gardens, lilies, um, foliage, just it was just gorgeous. Birds were everywhere and uh, there was gorgeous red bridges and features, a little playground for the kids um, and lots of these buildings where you could rest along the way and um, paint, draw or just take in the views. So I didn't tour the place until the very end where I took a lot of footage uh, but I decided to just get down to work as soon as I can. Now I did join a group of other artists, mainly from the Passer Society of Victoria and a few others that came along um, to paint. And we kind of entered here where the cafe area is and there was already plenty to take in. And easy to get overwhelmed when you first start because look, I mean, where do you start? But these little um, plants just there is where I chose to start. Something simple, well not so much simple, but just narrow it down to begin with. So as I had had a break already in my art where I hadn't been painting a lot um, and I was trying to get in that flow, I knew from past experiences always best to take the expectations off 
and narrow it down. And the best way to narrow that down is to limit yourself some time. So I tried, though I knew I would break the rules, I tried to limit each sketch or each little painting sketch to 20 minutes, which I didn't keep. But the first one I did was pretty much around 20 minutes. Because doing two to two to 20 minute sketches of just anything in your sketchbook can get you going. Because it doesn't take long to get something down. Now these are not from this area, but this is just to give you an idea of just quick little sketches just to get something going. Sometimes they don't work. You make a mess and then you just move on. So this is where I decided to sit down and just do something. There were some tables just behind this area and even though it was a grand scene there, we were sitting chatting as a group as people just entered. The cafe is kind of facing this area and I decided to just choose something in the foreground rather than tackle that big scene straight up. And those some brave souls went straight for those beautiful red bridges. I knew from recent experience that a bridge can take quite a bit of time to, um, to get down, you know, that topic. And even when I did tackle it later, I kept it really, really simple. I went for just an impression. I knew that this topic needed just an impression. I mean, you couldn't spend enough time out there to paint every little tiny element when there was thousands of elements to paint or draw. So one solution is to zoom up and just do a very um, closed in view of something, frame it and work on that and the other is to take in a bigger subject, a bigger landscape or um, a bigger view and simplify it as best as you can till it, so it only describes it just enough, just clearly enough that you can see what it is. And that became my objective. Now, would you believe I forgot to take a photo? But those in the foreground there, those, I don't know what they are, but those grassy things, I decided to tackle those. Now, they were very wispy, and um, but I just wanted to paint an impression of them. So broad strokes, minimum palette, uh, meaning not many colors. I stuck to three colors. Uh, for this one and for for my other paintings because I had to introduce a crimson colour. There was these pink flowers in the gardens that um, you just couldn't get without that crimson colour. Um, but I, And I used casein paint for these. But kept it very um, broad and I wanted to be very expressive with my line work. So rather than take in all of this beautiful area, which this is the area that I chose for my second painting, which I'll show you in a minute, or second study, uh, rather than take in all of this first up, I decided to go close in. And of course, if you've got your camera or your phone with you, you can preserve some of these moments to take home and work on later. So this was colour sketch number one. Approximately 20 to 25 minutes at the most while chatting to company, which is obviously part of the journey of painting out with a group. When I shifted to the second spot, oh my goodness, it was so tempting to paint the dried pods, uh, seed pods. They were just magnificent. But instead I took some photos and, um, 
and took some photos and close-ups of the area, this area that I was going to paint, and then stepped back to do the whole scene. I figured let's tackle the whole thing. I knew that would be an artistic challenge to get the scene in and just do an impression without overstating anything. So it was a matter of painting a suggestion and um, just picking out a few leaves and a few flowers to state what it was and hope for the best. And can I tell you, it was challenging. It, I needed all my concentration. I had uh, an alone space for a period of time and then I had company. Um, so it wasn't easy and it took me more than 20 minutes. I think it was about a 40 minute sketch. So the first lot of company um, spoke very, very fast, which I found it very, very difficult to focus on what I was doing because it was such a tough subject. In fact, I had looked at Monet's work earlier before I left and noticed and, and I looked at it and thought, gee, it's just blobs and squiggles, you know. Uh, but while I was doing it, I thought, mm, I can see why he did blobs and squiggles. <laughs> so it was um, to get that subject down in a way that described but over, didn't over-describe. Uh, blobs and squiggles, that's what we needed. So that was the second colour study. And to finish the day, I finished with, I had to get a sketch of one of the other artists. So I did a quick sketch of Pam Pretty, who's a very, uh, very good pastel artist. You can look her up. And um, I finished the day with that. I'll just show you quickly. So the gardens are open from December till April uh, each year. So I actually end up buying a uh, seasons pass even though there's only a few weeks left um, so I'm going to return to those gardens and do some more work probably do some oil painting and I also have a piece that I'm working on a very large piece that has lilies in it as it happens and um, I'm going to take advantage of that experience there and the sketches that I do and I might even return with that large painting when it's at the stage where I can work on site and give it that extra something something so I'll share that with you later thanks for uh, watching and um, hope to see you next time bye for now mm -hmm.